Good afternoon, Ravens, and welcome to this week's edition of OW Now. I'm Adam Cook. And I'm Gabby Thomas. On today's episode, we'll give you a look at world news, the Jerry Coons run, and a highly anticipated word from the halls. On Saturday, October 7th, the 19th annual Jared Coons Memorial Pumpkin Run was held in honor of Jared Coons. He was 10 years old when he passed away on October 5th of 1999. He passed away after a courageous eight-year battle with leukemia. In the 18 previous years, this event has been held. Over $700,000 have been raised and donated to several local organizations. Thank you to the over 3,500 people who came out and participated in this special event. Last weekend, Johns County Community College had their annual Japanese festival. Hundreds of people gathered to celebrate Japan's culture. All around the campus, there were various activities to do, such as sumo wrestling, games, and dancing. There were many vendors who sold a variety of Japanese products, from food, candy, books, art, and much more. The Japanese Fest offered a place for people who love Japanese culture to gather and celebrate with people who shared their passion. I'm here just to just cosplay, one, and two, just uh, hang out with people who are interested in the same stuff as I am. Like, we have anime and different um, Japanese culture things, I guess. Now let's send it to Game Day Northwest to catch up on this past week's sports. Welcome to Game Day Northwest. I'm Ben Blades with future pro golfer Rosie Glosner. First up this week, the Lydia Ravens golf team traveled to Heritage Park Golf Course for their regional tournament. Second hole, Julie Klein drives down the middle of the fairway, gets a nice approach shot, leading her to a right at the end of the hole to get a nice par. Next hole, Victoria Klausner, Rosie's sister, nails it under the green, has a 10-footer for a boarder, and then ends up putting for a par. Ladies win the regionals heading into state next week. Good luck, Monday. This past Monday, the annual Dig Pink Volleyball match was held at Olathe South. The Ravens showed up in their pink to play Olathe East to support Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Monday night, Olathe South was the annual Dig Pink, Dig Pink event to celebrate breast cancer survivors. The Ravens came out a little slow in their pink jerseys, dropping the first set to Olathe East, 25-22. In the second and third set, Taylor Cooper and Katie Parks picked up the slack, hitting successfully for the big kills throughout the night. Olathe East's energy would eventually fade as the Ravens pulled away in the last two sets for the win, with scores of 25-19 and 25-11. The Ravens play next tonight at Blue Valley West and Northwest and here at ONW. What a great way to start off October. Tuesday night, the boys' soccer team played Shawnee Mission South, looking to continue their undefeated season and dominance over the Sunfaller League, unlike the U.S. men's national team. First half, Ravens fly down the field, dominating on offense. Look at the great shot, and then Chase Klusman gets a header off the back of the head, gets the goal, and then Brandon Beard in the box during overtime gets the ball to go in for the game-winning goal to win the game against Shawnee Mission South. Way to go. Keep up the good work, boys. Last Saturday, gymnastics competed in the Sunflower League Championship. The Ravens gymnastics team set together before the meet. Senior Sydney Weeks starts her routine with some sass, looking very good as she does a strug and finishes the leap. Next, freshman Hallie Robertson begins her routine confidently. She does a stellar pose and finishes the landing. Finally, Brooke Elam starts on vault with determination. She runs quickly to the vault and sticks the landing. Sydney Weeks, Brooke Elam, and Hallie Robertson finished as the top three gymnasts from ONW and were, and were selected to compete at Shawnee Mission South. Weeks placed second last night in the all-around. Next up is State on October 21st. Last, night, last Thursday night, the Ravens football team hosted the Lawrence Free State Firebirds on senior night. Raven Nation in full force with their pink out with the opening kickoff. Unfortunately, the Firebirds controlled the first half. Finally, in the fourth quarter, quarterback Braden Cook Gets the offense going with a huge run, taking the ball into the red zone. And then finally, Drew Dumas punches his way through the middle, giving the push right to the goal line. Next play, Bryn Cook gets a dive on the run to get a two-yard run. Then gets Cole Manning gets his first ever touchdown reception of 25 yards or more. And unfortunately, the Ravens lost 42-14. to See us tonight on the broadcast from TV25 and ONW's YouTube page so we can see this and hear me live with ben, Blit with ben Whitney and Ryan Atchison. 
That's all for sports this week. For Game Day Northwest, this has been Rosie Klausner and Ben Blades. Now back to the desk. After devastating wildfires, the death toll has risen to 23 in Northern California. The famous region known as Wine Country looks like it has been hit by a nuclear bomb after the fires raged. At least a couple hundred are missing as the fire has begun to die down, but no rain is in sight. In the weeks after the devastation of Hurricane Maria, Puerto Rico is slowly moving towards rebuilding. 89% of the Caribbean territory is still without power and aid is slowly moving through the island. President Trump announced that the U.S. cannot stay in Puerto Rico forever given the cost of rebuilding. North Korea's foreign minister gave the U.S. another warning in the wake of President Trump's U.N. speech. The Asian dictatorship is not too happy about their, leader, about their leader being referred to as Rocket Man by the president. North Korea responded by saying that the U.S. has lit the wick of war. The historic Boy Scouts of America are coming out with a new twist. Girls will now be accepted into the historic boys club. It is viewed as a progressive step forward as the organization spent a few years reviewing requests of admission from families and girls. Now, what fun would our jobs be if we never head to the halls to embarrass the students of Olathe Northwest? This week, Adam and Roan decided to test your knowledge on a variety of different fall sports. How many points do you get for a field goal in football? One. For a field goal, you get one point. Sometimes. How many points do you get for a field goal? One. Can anybody tell me what a field goal is? No. Nope. Oh, oh, it's that little square thing that's like that's that. Uh, three. Hey, all right. Good job. Uh, there's three points. Three points? One point. Wait, it depends. Three points. Three points. Three Good points. job. Point. In volleyball, what does a libero do? Hit it. Spike. I'm guessing whenever you toss it up, like whenever they serve it, and then, no, that's a spike. Uh... They hit it over the net? They're like in the back. They get put in for the, they wear the they different get jersey. substituted in. Uh, what place did the volleyball team finish in state last year? I don't know. First. 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 We won state. Uh, what does XC stand for? The letters XC. I don't know. I think it's fine. XC. No clue. I don't know, it sounds like a drug. <laughs> cross country. That's cross country. What is X? Uh, cross, cross country. country. Good job. Uh, can you demonstrate a gymnastics salute for me? Um. <laughs> no. Good job. How many innings do you play in a football game? In a football game? Six? Close. That's all for us this week. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at ONW underscore Raven Daily and on Snapchat at ONW Now to stay up to date on what's going on here at Northwest. For Adam Cook and the rest of the Convergence team, I'm Gabby Thomas. We'll see you next week.